Animations, for the most part, are made using animation programs. Like this, or that, or this. This is what I use. You can also do it traditionally with a pencil and paper. But what if I tried to animate using programs that were never meant to be animated with? What then? Uh, it would be difficult, I think. But how much so? And what would it look like? That's what we're gonna find out. This was heavily inspired by these two videos, so shout out to them. Time to animate. All right, we're starting pretty easy with a program you're actually supposed to draw in. You're not supposed to animate in this. But fun fact, I believe my first ever digital animation was made in MS Paint. I straight up drew every frame and used the default windows a picture thing to just quickly tap right and view the animation. But thanks to this video here, I learned a little trick that's gonna help in this uh, adventure, which I will explain in a second. But for now, we're gonna draw frame one of this walk cycle. I'm gonna do a simple guy with a circular head. <laughs> I guess the Marshmallow Man aesthetic. Do a slight lean, it's probably a bit big. Now it's very important that I use the pencil tool as opposed to the brush tool. I think he deserves a face. So now I'm gonna save this in a folder specifically for this experiment as 01. And now here's the, here's the trick I learned. I'm gonna make an onion skin. Normally in animation you can see a sort of transparent version of the last frame. In paint that's not gonna be possible. But if I color this pink, oh god. See, sometimes this just doesn't work. Uh, I'm just gonna try this, okay. Scribble, transparent selection is on. So with black and white as the two colors, Control A, select everything, Control X to cut it. Now turn color to, to this gray. When you paste, the gray is gone. Uh, that's the idea behind the onion skinning. Uh, we're gonna try again on the next frame, but for now I'm just deleting this and estimating where it was. So he's gonna come down a little. Let's, uh, we have to press save as, not save, because it'll overwrite. Save as O2. Brilliant. Now will this fill in with pink? Oh. Yes, it actually worked that time. Now we're gonna have the fully up position. Leg is crossing over. Arm crossing over as well. The other, the other arm can just be hidden. Now let's see if this works. Select everything. I'm gonna try and get rid of the onion skin. Control X change the second color to pink, paste, and it's gone. Magic. I almost pressed save just then, which would have, uh, wait, no, I did press save. Not with control S, I pressed the save button instead of file. Uh, second frame is gone. I'm gonna have to do that again. Wait, I can control Z enough. Okay, saved. We have half a walk cycle loop. We have to switch limbs. Let me fix frame two first. Now we make the back limbs become the front limbs just by doing this. Voila. And here's my MS Paint walk cycle. I would say, aside from having very few frames, it looks all right. It's a program made for drawing, not the best out there, not made for animating. So overall, pretty expected results. Next up is Scriblio, or Scribble.io. It's basically Pictionary. So I'm gonna draw each frame of a walk cycle when it's my turn in the game. But the catch is I'm playing in a public lobby and someone has to guess the word. I don't know how hard this is gonna be, but there's probably gonna be random objects popping up in the walk cycle. No onion skin possible. Try and draw somewhere in the middle. All right, let's go. I guess I'm just gonna play as well. Future, could it, could it be present? Oh my God, library. Yeah, I know books. Oh, here we go. Heal, that could work out quite nicely. Surely I don't screw this up. Just get the kind of normal starting pose. That's a bit wide. There we go. And people got it. That's frame one, I should print screen it. Okay, I am up again. Holy, okay. I can do fried chicken and it can be holding a fried chicken. I should draw the face just to make sure it's in there. Undo that. Okay, I'm gonna draw some fried chicken, which I can do like so. I'll draw like a drumstick, I guess. I could've drawn a KFC bucket. Oh, someone got it. Mission successful. I think this pose is quite bad, but maybe it'll work. Okay, I can draw a magnifying glass in his hand. Let's go. Gotta go like this. So he's standing up, doing the kind of crossover. Okay, I'm gonna draw a magnifying glass. Okay, someone got it, perfect. 
that's a win. It's gonna look pretty chaotic with the random objects in the way, but should should work. Monocle? Detective. And we're up. Okay. Uh, could I do a yawn? Midwalk? I guess I could try. I have kind of closed eyes. I have to kind of do eyebrows to imply that the, those are eyes. Oh, someone got it. It's only four letters, it makes sense. All right, <laughs> job done. That's all I really need, four frames for this choppy loop. I don't need to switch limbs because it's a stick man. Well, it took half an hour just to do those four frames, but let's see what this, uh, let's see what this loop looks like. Okay, uh, I think that looks like a walk cycle. That's not terrible, honestly. If you ignore all the surroundings, you can, you can see the vision. Uh, now, do I need to blur anything? I definitely do have to blur something. Cool, well that was a rousing success. <music> FL Studio. I was randomly putting in these notes and it kind of accidentally sounds like Pirates of the Caribbean. Does it? Well, we're gonna delete all that. If we set the uh, snapping to none, we can draw notes of any size and place them anywhere, which is perfect because then we can draw anything. So I'm just gonna draw like the same walk cycle I've been doing, but I guess this time we can also listen to it. Each bar is like a frame. And then uh, if we play it fast enough, maybe we can actually just use that video. Uh, otherwise, just screenshots. All right, I'm just gonna draw a, uh, draw a head. <laughs> Good enough. It's a lovely torso. Sounded a bit cannibalistic there. I'm thinking I need to go even smaller on the pixels. It's a decent first frame. It does fit within the bar. What's that sound like? Gorgeous. What's the highest this goes? 522, okay. Um, yeah, that's... <laughs> I'm no Mozart. Alright, here are the four bars of absolute music sequenced together. I'm okay with how this turned out. Looks like a dude walking at a, at a very crunchy frame rate. For this one, I'm gonna fill it up with a bunch of dots and use O's to draw the stick man. I'm sure I could find something that converts pictures to text, aka ASCII art, but I wanted to do it the old fashioned way. I know all the others so far have just been screenshots put together, which is kinda lame, but this time I can actually do it all within Notepad. If I press page down on my keyboard, I can jump down a page in Notepad, which will look like going to the next frame. As long as each frame fills exactly one page and I press it fast enough, it'll look like an animation. And I can't just hold it because it'll go too fast. Well, not much to say about the process, it was, uh, it was pretty easy, but a touch tedious. So here's the animation. It really is just me pressing page down a bunch. Looks pretty good. It's an undefined and unstable frame rate, but somehow it feels like the smoothest one so far. All right, let's move on. Over on Patreon, you can see me attempt a Google Sheets and Google Maps animation. But if you don't care about that, get ready for- So it can draw a stick man. Animate an ASCII stick man. It's not gonna work. Oh, it almost did, but every frame is the same. Waving. <laughs> That's not what it's doing. Animate. Stickman. Walking. Well, he's moving. Detailed? Oh my god. He's disintegrating. Okay, let's see if this works. Um, no. <laughs> Can you create a GIF? Right, well I'm gonna have to screenshot the frames. If I get any frames worth using, create ASCII art of someone mid walk? No. <laughs> I thought AI was supposed to be good now. Three lines for torso and two lines for each limb. Oh, wait, almost. I'll sign up. All right, I signed in. It's supposed to be smarter now, apparently. Animator stick man? If it's this easy, <laughs> that's different. Almost is waving. <gasps> oh my God. I'm gonna sequence these images and see if, uh, see what it looks like. 
So that's a walk cycle, according to ChatGPT. We're getting somewhere. Oh, that's decent. Little pinhead, but long torso. Detailed stickman walk animation. Why does it delete one leg every time? Ooh, stepping down, left arm swinging back. Let's see what that does. Uh, nothing. It does understand what it's supposed to be doing, but it's not doing it. Both legs slightly bent. That is not what's happening. Right, if I copy this, will it draw the same thing? No, it's different and bad. Oh no, guess I'm stuck with 3.5. That's just a, that's just a foot sawn in half. You get the idea. I tried a bunch more prompts and didn't get very far. But here are the two animations I got that were closest to a walk. Yeah, it doesn't quite look like any walk I've ever seen. Hey, what can you do? I tried. All right, so we need a legal position uh, and we need to make a whole stick, man. So I'm gonna put a knight for the head because uh, that's the closest thing we have to a head. Aside from maybe the king and queen. We can have two rooks and a bishop down here for the torso. We can only have eight pawns max, so it's gonna work out fine. We're gonna have to make him walk the other way. Uh, so he's gonna be walking right to left. So the starting pose is gonna be just that. It's as complex as I can make it. Yeah, I can only have two pawns for each limb. I have to have the arms compressed in like that. There's like three positions they can be in. Oh. Um, I need a king and I need at least a white king to make sure it's not in check. I'll just put the white king up here. Screenshot that. Frame two. I'm gonna have this leg bend. The other leg is supposed to be sliding back a little, but one pixel is far too much. I will make, I'll make this arm go forward. I genuinely have no idea if this is gonna look remotely reasonable. Oh god, the leg's crossing over. It's not gonna be a pretty sight. Frame three, we straighten out this leg. We have the other leg crossing over somehow. <laughs> like that. Arms are in the middle. I'll have like sort of the implication of an arm via that one pawn. I'm gonna move the head up as well. This looks like nothing. <laughs> have this leg back. Have this leg bending. What am I looking at? What on earth? If you lean back and squint, you can kind of see it, or, or is that just wishful thinking? I'm not sure you can improve much upon that on a chessboard with legal positions. I'm gonna go ahead and say that was more successful than ChatGPT. So let's move on to the next program. So there's this handy cube simulator where you can type in moves and do all sorts of stuff. I can change this from 3x3 to 16x16 and we basically have a 16x16 pixel grid to work with. If I type L it'll move the left side clockwise, L2 does it twice and L prime does it backwards. If I wanted to move the fifth layer deep I could type 5L and it would move the fifth from the left. To do the same from the up face I type U and I don't need to worry about any of the other faces. Now without going off on a massive tangent, I'll, uh, I'll quickly explain how to change one pixel. If I wanted to draw a third from the left and six down, I would type 3L 6U 3L prime 6U prime. You can actually write it like this which is a shortcut for A B A prime B prime. And you'll notice it leaves a pixel in the same spot on every face. So the animation is going to happen on every face simultaneously, which is cool. You can change multiple pixels at once if they're on the same row or column, so the plan is to do it column by column because that should be easiest. But first I'm making the walk cycle in Adobe Animate on this grid so I know exactly which pieces to change on the cube. With that done, I just have to grind out a bunch of commutators to draw each frame on the cube. And I can display the animation within the program again by clicking to different places in the text. After each frame I can reset the cube by taking all those previous moves, putting them in brackets and putting that prime symbol in front of it, which does everything in the brackets backwards. Not the most efficient way, but the easiest to deal with. Alright, I finished typing out all the moves and formatted it to fit on one page. Now I can click these strings of slashes to take me to each frame. Yeah, it turns out that's hard to do quickly and accurately. But here's the animation in screenshot form. Very nice. And you can see it in three faces from this angle. The top of his head turning blue was unavoidable with the space I had, but we can call that a 3D effect. It's not bad. 
The idea behind this one is to make a separate channel for each frame. Then I can draw each pose out of Discord emojis and click each channel to cycle through the frames. I decided to use this smiley face for the head, which is kind of funny because it's the same thickness as the rest of the body, and I used these yellow squares for that. But I used a sandal for the flat foot and the shoe for when it needs to be at an angle. I also had to use these hyphens so the head stayed in place, which is fine I guess, and time to tediously place a bunch of emojis. Now let's see how that turned out. Yeah, the clicking is never not going to be choppy. Here's the screenshot sequence. A nice smooth 6 FPS. That's an okay walk cycle. I'm going to call that a success. What I've learned from this is animating is best left to programs made for animating, but it's not required. Anyway, hope you had fun watching. Uh, let me know what your favorite animation in this video was, and I will see you next week.